Spotlight, lectures and performances on and around Albany State University. We began this process of identifying with Good Energy Day on 999, and we sought each year thereafter, concluding with this year, today, to recognize Good Energy Day and to have some activity that prompted us to pause for a moment to reflect upon our stewardship role on this planet Earth. So it's my privilege today to just be the introducing party in allowing the others who play a more important role in Good Energy Day to have their say. I do want to reflect just for a moment, though, on the work that our government is doing in the explorations in outer space. Recently, I went on the internet and saw some magnificent pictures of planet Mars. And what struck me about the planet is that had I not known that those were photographs of the planet Mars, I would have easily thought there were photographs of some arid section of planet Earth. The atmosphere looked chillingly similar to ours, the topography looked similar to ours, and the soil had that Georgia red clay look about it. So it was a moment of genuine reflection for me to consider that not only are we part of one planet, part of one solar system, but part of a multiverse of solar systems, and we really do have to be careful and thoughtful and mindful of this small little speck in the larger constellations of solar systems that we call our home. With that, I'd like to turn over this program to our uh, presider and host of the day. He is a young man who has played a very key role in Albany State's awareness about energy and is our environmental health, life, and safety coordinator, and it's none other than Mr. Islam Kware. Mr. Kware, we're glad you're taking a lead in this program. Take it away. Thank you. I'd like to um, introduce my man to my um, David Lawrence, uh, the, uh, the SGA president, Mr. Lawrence. My name is David Lawrence. I'm a 20-year-old junior. My major is supply chain logistics management here at Albany State University. I'm actually a native of Albany, and I'm a graduate of Westover High, so shout out to all my future patriots in the crowd out there. Um, I'm, president of an, I'm president of an organization called Enactus, and one of our projects this year, we've been working with a local group called Equinox, and one of their projects we've been working with them is they have a new laundry detergent they're getting out. And the laundry detergent, they actually send a portion of those donations to the Global Soap Project. What, and the Global Soap Project is where they take bars, is where they take bars of soap like out of the Hilton, Marriott, all the hotels you can think of. They recycle, and what they do is they break them down, recycle them, and Re and remake them and they send them off to areas of the world where they can be used again, like an example, third world countries where hygiene is not as good. Um, I just want to know, and I want to get you guys involved in this, by any chance, does anybody have a guess of how many bars of soap that would be in a day? Anybody? Hmm. Like, my, I've, do you guys have an idea of like how many bars of soap do, do hotels like just throw away each and every day? That hundred, okay. that million, that, that million I heard was close. Try 300 million. There's 300 million of those bars of soap thrown out every day. And they're like, and they're pretty much like the regular bars you guys use at home. And the reason I brought that up is, we is Good Energy Day is for us a way to show that we need is a way for us to show that there's a way f to save the environment, recycle the environment, but also save each, uh, also give back to each other, as in one human race, one as in one human race. We look to, e e we have to look amongst each other for strength, encouragement, like, how many of you guys look to your families and to your friends for strength, health, and encouragement on a daily basis? 
that's kind of one essence of what Get Energy Day is all about. We're here to, excuse me, we're here to pretty much give you guys ideas on like going green with the environment, also showing you guys that good energy starts with you. Good energy starts with just the small things like putting a smile on each other's face, just giving each other an encouraging word, so on and so forth. Um, that was just my little opening spill, and that was just a little bit of what Good Energy Day means to me. So we're going to go ahead and move on with the program. And at this time, I'm going to introduce Ms. Khadija Nuradeen. She is our missing at this, and she will introduce our first speaker for the afternoon. Khadija? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Khadija Nuradeen, a 21-year-old marketing and management major here at Albany State University. I am also Miss Enactus and um, Executive Assistant of Enactus. Today I will be introducing Mr. Aaron Muhammad. Aaron Muhammad was a school teacher for over 20 years. Currently, he is a consultant working with the school boards across the state of Georgia. He is the owner of Elevated Places Incorporated, which focuses on self-improvement and self-development. The program teaches individuals to develop their minds and thought process. He, is, he currently resides in Albany, Georgia, and is happily married with seven children. He is a member of Omega Phi Psi Fraternity Incorporated and has a computer science degree from Jacksonville State University. Please. Stand up and help me welcome Mr. Aaron Muhammad. First and foremost, giving God an honor and praise, we thank God for this day. We thank God for giving us the opportunity to share a few words with you all just to uh, shine some light on Good Energy Day. I want to also take the time and thank the president of Albany State for allowing us to come and share words, Mr. Kwawi, for inviting us to come and share some words. Um, it's a very interesting topic, you know, and uh, I've been given an opportunity to share it from a spiritual standpoint. Uh, the young man that came up and introduced, not the young man, the young lady that introduced me, but the young man before her said, good energy day starts with you, which I think if we take that seriously, our job is done. Now, real briefly, I want to move through some information to help us um, preserve energy, to help us understand what energy is about, to help us to understand what the environment is about. Now, environment, we think about things that surround us. True? True? OK, good. What does the word environment mean? Where does it come from? Anyone know? Environment, what is the meaning of environment? Hmm. Say it again, I'm sorry. Surroundings. Okay. Say it again, speak up. What's your name? People and objects that surround you, good answer. People and objects that surround you. Now, when we talk about environment, the first thing went to my mind was the scripture. When God said he was gonna make everything good, right? He made this, he set everything in order. And then he created man. And then he gave man some instructions. He told man to subdue the earth, take it under your control. And those are some powerful instructions. After he did everything else, the birds, the bees, the water, the this, the that, he did everything, made it good, then he took a seat. And he told man to subdue the earth. Be fruitful, multiply, take it under your control. So that's why when a young man said good energy starts with us, that's true. Because what you see in the land and the water, it's because of us. Now, first of all, I can go around the room and ask everybody in this room, who are you? And the first thing you're going to give me is your name. True? Right. Now, if I come around a second time and ask you another question, what's your name? What would you say? Why the same thing? Different answer. Different question. Because most of us sitting in this room with the sound of my voice really don't know who we are. 
we really don't know who we are. So when I ask you the question, who are you? You would tell me your name because you don't know who you are. And we do it everywhere we go. We ask the question. I don't care from lawyers to doctors to school teachers to students. When you ask a person who you are, they're going to say their name. But look what God said. I made everything, but I'm placing it under your control. So in reality, man is in control of everything that happens on the earth. Now, there is 196,940,000 square miles of earth. Listen, look at this now. 57,250,000 square miles of land. 139,685,000 square miles of water. Now, you ask the question, how do you know all of that? Subdue the earth, take it under your control. So if it's under my control, you don't have a house and don't know every square inch of your house, do you? If you have a house, you know every square inch of your home, don't you? Every square inch of it. You know, when somebody come to your house, what's in that room? I don't know. You don't know. How long you been living here? Oh, about 20, 30 years. You don't know what's in that room? Right? We're talking about good energy day. And I looked at the, when I looked at it, I said, good energy day. Hmm. Why good? Why good energy day? You know how people is sometimes got good energy, bad energy, right? But we're focusing on good energy day, and we have to look at ourselves. Now, there's a scripture in the Holy Quran. Now, the Holy Quran are the book of the Muslims and those of us who are Shriners. See, Masons read both books. Right? Corruption have appeared on the land and the sea on account of what men's hands have wrought. So when we see the filth that's in the water, it's because of some man did it. The air is polluted because of some man did it. Now, how are we going to clean it up? It starts with self. It starts with self. Now, here's the solution, and we're going to finish up. See, everything we read is in those two books, those books, those spiritual books. Any solution, any problems that we have, and even in school, the, it, it, the, the, the solutions are spiritual. Because thought precedes actions. You can't think of anything without thinking about it. You can't do anything without thinking about it. You had to get up and think about brushing your teeth this morning, right? Some of us. Right? But you have to think first. It starts in the mind. So corruption have appeared on the land and the sea on account of what men's hands have wrought. We have pollution of kind of what men have done. Bad water. Do anyone in here know what pH means? Wow. pH, what's pH? The one you give me. So many of them, right? It's just so many of them. Just pick one. Say it again. The measure of acidity in your body. Now, do you know this is the south, right? So it's a lot of farming going on. So when we farm and plant things, they test, they test the acidity or the pH in the earth before you can plant something. So that means since we all came from the earth, it's in the book, right? Blood of each other's blood, bone of each other's bone, the water make up our blood, the rocks make up our bones, right? That's we from the earth. So there's an acidity level that we all have. But how come we're not studying that? We're talking about good energy. See, what happens is when we're full of acid, President, we kind of like, I want you to be full of acid too. So whatever come, when I come around you, guess what? I, I want you to feel the same way I'm feeling. You ever notice people come around? Oh, here he come, don't, right? Bad attitudes, bad energy, bad vibe. I just ain't feeling something about that one right there. And some of us, and this is all of us, this is not just the students, this is every last one, and you hear my voice, I'm talking to you too. 
Check the acidity level in your body. Stiff joints, don't know why, acid. Who all drink milk in here? Raise your hand. Everybody drinks milk, right? Milk does your body good, doesn't it? Yeah, I know I used to think the same thing too, right? But milk forms acidosis. And what happens is to, for your body to fight acid, it uses calcium. And if you're not putting enough calcium in your body to fight the acid, where does it get it from? Say it again. Your bones. Now we have brittle bones now. See, we're talking about good energy. We're talking about if we're walking around stiff, boned, hard, acid, we can't project positive, good energy. So it starts with us. We can go out there and sweep the trees and shake and sweep the leaves up all we want to. But if we're walking around, because remember, he said, subdue the earth, take it under your control. He gave us power. But it says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Not the lack of cars, not the lack of money, the lack of of knowledge. He didn't even say the lack of prayer, did he? He said the lack of knowledge. Because what can we do ignorant? See how quiet it is in here? That's good. So we have to gain knowledge. And it starts in the beginning. Closing. Solution. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind. I'm going to say that again. There's a lot of power in that. Be ye not conformed to this world, this world, this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind. How do we renew our mind? Prayer. Knowledge, say again, can't hear you. Eating healthy, good one. Prayer, knowledge, eating healthy. We're talking about saving the environment. It starts with me. It starts with me, no one else. We are the world. We are the world, right? We are the children. Y'all know that song? We are the one. Make a brighter day. So let's start. Start what? There's a choice we're making. <laughs> we're saving our own life, right? I mean, we need to listen to that. I got a 10-year-old, and he knows that song word for word. If it was good for me, why not good for him? He has to know. It starts with you, son. There's nothing going to drop out of the sky and make nothing happen. You have to make it happen. That's why he said replenish the earth subdue it, take it under your control. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So any problem that we encounter in our life, we have to check our thinking. We have to check my thinking. If I'm encountering a problem, especially the young ladies here, I was talking to the president earlier, he's like, he was sharing with me how young men today, see, we, we just gone. We just, we just rebelling. Because this world is not really set for us to succeed. It's just not. Proof is in the pudding. Check the prison record. And you see what's in the prison. It's not made. Look around. How many, look, look how many men. When you go to church, look how many, look how many men you see in church. When you go to the supermarket, how many men you see in the supermarket working? Go to the bank. How many men you see there in the bank? No. It's not made for us to succeed. That's why he said, be ye not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. So you young ladies, you produce children, don't you? So what you going to teach your child? You can't teach him what you don't know. So if you're around trying to be like Beyonce, 
All my single ladies. All my single ladies. Put your hands, see? Yeah, after a while, y'all gonna be in your seat getting your thing off, right? Right? But if we around here trying to be like Beyonce, what you gonna teach your children? See, we talking about changing an environment. It starts with me. There's no, we can go out there and rake leaves and clean the sidewalk and plant this good. Ah, no, no, no. It's not going to do it. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if we want to change the environment, we got to start developing ourselves. I was talking to the young lady out there, and I'm going to close with this name, Star. Real good, vibrant, good energy. She's about ready to graduate from school. But she's still trying to find herself. And we talk, because I went through the same thing when I graduated. I went from psychology major to engineer major to computer science major, because I thought about money. My whole mindset is I got to get a college degree so I can make money. Not why am I on this earth? What's my purpose here? So let me go to college. Let me go to Albany State to develop who I am, who I am already. My mom says, son, you should be a teacher. I'm like, nah, teachers don't make no money. Right? They don't. They don't. They talking about spending $150,000 for the aquarium down here in Albany. $150,000 for the aquarium. Who been in the aquarium in Albany already? How many times you been there? Five, six times? Anything new since you been there? I mean, it's nice, but why not spend that $150,000 to develop a human being? Find buildings, man. And that's what we do. That's why we don't love this world. You can't, because this world does that. Millions and millions of dollars on building buildings, but won't spend millions of dollars to pay a teacher. Everybody had a teacher. President Obama had a teacher. Okay, what you say? He had a teacher. Name one person that you know that didn't have a teacher. Can't name one. So why not invest in teachers? And your first teacher is who? Your mother. That's your first teacher. That's why, young ladies, it's important that you love who you are. So when I come along, I can't sell you nothing and tell you anything. I got five daughters. Yeah, I got it in. What's wrong with that? Y'all like, oh, come on now. We talking, and I talk to my daughter the same way. So we got to get into developing human beings. That's what this is all about. Developing the human being because the human being has destroyed everything. Now how could you throw out thousands and thousands of bars of soap? Thousands. What kind of mindset is that? To throw out thousands of bars of soap when people need soap, just be clean. You go to these restaurants and they throw out thousands of pounds of food. Just put it in the garbage. Just put it in the garbage. What kind of mindset is that? And I know we got other people that's coming before me, but we, don't, we may not have this opportunity again. But we got to check our thinking as a people. You look in the mirror as I look in the mirror. Michael Jackson and we in the world said what? Starting with the man in the mirror. The man in the mirror. And I'm asking him to do what? Make a change. Right? So thank y'all so much. I really appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much, Brother Kwari. <laughs> President, thank you so much. May God continue to bless us. Thank you. One more time, y'all, for Brother Aaron Muhammad. And you talk about good energy. Good energy is what I feel right now, from President Freeman on down to Mr. Lawrence, and especially with that closing of, of Mr. Muhammad, I really feel the good energy flowing. Let's keep this thing moving one time. Um, Sadiq White, we introduce our next speaker. And if you don't know everyone, I'm Islam Kwawi. I am the Environmental Health Life Safety Coordinator here at Albany State. I'm responsible for all the recycling, and compliances of OSHA and the other standards in um, the federal and the state government. 
This next speaker is a graduate of University of Georgia. He has been a part of the Georgia Forcing Commission for 30 years. He is married to Miss Janice Norville and has four children. He's currently serve as a managerial forester for Albany Southwest Georgia area, which spans six counties. His favorite quote is, right tree, right place, right time. Please welcome Mr. Chuck Norville. Thank you. Uh, I don't speak this often, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to uh, uh, have a chance to uh, talk a little bit about trees. Um, I kid people when they ask me what I do, I just tell them that uh, I watch trees grow. And that is a part of it. Uh, when you, when you uh, think of energy, uh, there's energy that, that comes from the sun, there's energy that is stored in things like fossil fuels, uh, and, and when we release that energy, uh, we, we make pollution. So the thing, the thing that trees do with, with that pollution, since we, we need oxygen and they need carbon dioxide, uh, they, they take in that carbon dioxide and release oxygen, and then they build themselves out of it with the help of the sun. So trees are able to use the sun's energy to make themselves and to make all the products that we get from trees. And roughly, we get like 5,000 different products from trees. So trees are very important. Uh, they're... The timber industry in Georgia is the number one industry, so that means we, we have lots of jobs in the forest industry, uh, both public and private. And uh, Georgia, at one time, uh, we were discussing this earlier, Georgia at one time uh, has 82% of the state has been under the plow. So as you move to north, towards North Georgia, you see uh, steeper terrain and lots of contours that were utilized to to make it possible for uh, you know tilling that land and growing crops. Now the state is two thirds forested, approximately 24 million acres. So Georgia's undergone a lot of changes uh, when the when the state and the country was settled. Uh, we, we use those resources, those forest resources, uh, to, to help develop the country, and we're still doing that. Uh, other countries are doing that too. Um, you've, you may have heard this before, we're, we're cutting our tropical forests at an alarming rate. We have the equipment to do that. Uh, we get lots, as I said, we get lots of uh, products from trees, some are are, are rare, um, and trees can grow very fast and live a very long time, but uh, uh, it takes, it takes uh, a lot of planning uh, to, to keep that resource producing. So in Georgia, for instance, we harvest about 600,000 acres a year, and only in about a year or two back in the 80s uh, with federal cost share programs were we able to, to plant that many acres. So we're, right now we're harvesting more acres than, than we're replanting. And what's happening around the world and uh, to some extent in Georgia, Georgia is a very fast growing state. Uh, we're, we're, when, you, when you harvest a stand of trees, whether you clear cut, thin, uh, as long as you don't change the use, you're not destroying the forest, as some people have said. Uh, you know, harvesting the forest is destroying the forest kind of thing. Uh, the only way you destroy that forest is to convert it. If you turn it into a mall or a pasture or something, then you're destroying that forest because it can't reproduce. 
and that's that's happening rapidly. Um, also, uh, if you, I don't know all this, the uh, the statistics that uh, were, were quoted earlier about the the amount of land that covers the earth, uh, but only about a third of it is productive. Uh, as you well know, uh, we have a lot of land that uh, is is arid, desert land uh, around the world. The deserts are growing, uh, so we need to to be more proactive uh, to make sure that that we're not going to cut ourselves out of of the benefits that trees provide: the jobs, the the raw materials, and the clean air, clean water. Uh, as far as energy goes, um, the tree, the tree, as it receives the sun's energy and uses it to build itself, it also uh, transpires water when it releases oxygen through photosynthesis, and in that process, it cools the area. So, if you have three properly planted trees around your home. The, the southwest side of your home receives the most heat in the day, the evening heat. So three trees can reduce your cooling costs, especially in, in this part of the world, uh, as much as 50%. So trees can save energy that way. So we all know that during the summer, uh, it's a whole lot cooler, 15 degrees cooler approximately under, under the shade of a tree than it is uh, out in the open, and it's even hotter on hard surfaces. And in Georgia, uh, we, we did a survey uh, with the University of Georgia. Uh, we're losing approximately 105 acres of forest a day. Uh, and it's being replaced with hard surface. And hard surfaces uh, absorb heat and so they receive the heat during the day, they absorb it and give it back off even after the sun goes down. So it's very important to plant trees. Uh, the quote that, uh, that you heard earlier, the right tree in the right place at the right time. Um, Arbor Day in Georgia is the third Friday in February. Uh, that's when you should at least have planted your tree. And it's, it's a time when everybody can just do a simple act of planting a tree. Uh, if you plant one tree every year uh, during your lifetime, if you live 75 years, you'll have planted 75 trees. And that, it's a small act, but it's very important because every one of us uses through, through paper products and all these other products, every one of us use the equivalent of a a 100-foot, 18-inch tree in our lifetime. So we need to make sure that future generations have those trees to, uh, to, get, to get the same benefits from. Um, I guess in closing, uh, just a little bit about what uh, the Georgia Forestry Commission does. Uh, we do have a nursery. Uh, our job is to help protect the forest from fire, from insects and disease, uh, to promote forestry, and to help sustain our forest for future generations by, by helping uh, uh, educate and promote wise conservation. So uh, I guess in closing, uh, just remember all those things we get from trees, all those benefits, what's unique about trees is that they provide, they provide energy, they help store energy, and they're a renewable resource. So a lot of other sources of energy, um, you know, while, while they pollute, uh, things that come from trees uh, can help uh, you know, re recycle uh, those pollutants and, and, and not create um, more pollutants, uh, such as burning fossil fuels. And 
one of the th one of the new plants that we have in Georgia, uh, down in Waycross, Georgia, uh, just just for uh, just for scale, uh, it produces or it will produce when it's in full production, 750 million tons of wood pellets, and they're being utilized in Europe because they're utilized for fuel, and again. Uh, you know, you can burn trees and grow more trees and you'll have that energy for, for continually. Uh, I guess that's all I have right now. And uh, again, I uh, appreciate your, your time. Glad you could come here. And uh, I'll turn it back over to Islam. Thank you, Mr. Norvell. Everyone hold your applause for a second because I need to tell you something about Mr. Novell. I spoke with his wife yesterday and um, Mr. Novell's wife is battling cancer right now. And I spoke with her and she's going through all kind of uh, dialysis and all kind of, you know, doctors, you know, jugging at her, taking samples of this and that. And she had the spirit, she had the good energy to talk to me about five to ten minutes about her husband and how he uses her phone and all kind of stuff. She had me laughing like it was nothing wrong with her. And that's the perfect example of good energy in its rawest form. And I'd like to, all of us to send our prayers and our big round of applause out to not only Miss Novell, but Miss Novell, who's battling cancer, who really wanted to be here, but she couldn't make it. Right? So, we really appreciate that. We really appreciate it. We really appreciate that. All right. Um, we have another kind of good energy for you. Since everybody's sort of winding down, it's getting close to the end, we have two more speakers, three more speakers. I want to show you another form of good energy. Mr. Quincy Reed. I know all y'all know how to dance. Every last one of y'all. I can dance too. Dance too. What's up, y'all want somebody? Mr. Quincy Reed. Let's hear it, y'all. Y'all hear it? Say go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, good energy. He? All right. Round of applause, y'all, for Mr. Quincy Reed. We got good energy going in all forms and flavors up in here at Albany State University. That's right, Mr. David Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Kwawi. Um, our next speaker is Miss is Miss Lori Farkas. Miss Farkas' family has lived in Albany for six generations. Lori has been with Water, Gas, and Light Commission for nearly 20 years. She's the first woman to earn the position of Assistant General Manager at, Water, Gas, and, at the Albany Water, Gas, and Light Commission. There was no community involvement or educational programs at Water, Gas, and Light until Lori was hired and began creating them. She has twice been sent personal letters of, com of, com of commendation from President George W. Bush, as well as Oprah Winfrey for the program she has created that received national attention. Laura has been named to the Who's Who in Energy Management and Who's Who in International Professionals by Governor Zell Miller, and Governor Zell Miller has recognized her for her long dedication and community service. Laura has also received the coveted Edward A. Freeman Leadership Award, which is the highest award for leadership given in the city of Albany. Laura was the first and only, so far, female chairman in the in the 81-year history of the Southwest Georgia chapter of the American Red Cross. Her motto is, community service is the rent we pay for living. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Ms. Lori Frankis. Thank you. You know, your mind, once expanded to new ideas, can never go back to where it was before you heard them. And I've heard some new ideas today, which really are old, all the way back to the beginning of time. Um, we, my generation and older, never heard the words ecology, recycling, conservation. You are probably the first generation who grew up hearing those words and knowing what those three things meant. 
So we always think that we invent things, but Chief Seattle in the 1800s, who was a Lakota Indian chief, said that we must look to the seventh generation of the seventh son. And what he meant by that was we must protect the earth, take care of it, so it will be there for seven generations out. Most Native Americans, when they left a campsite, they would go and make it back the total way that it was before they got there. If they made a campfire, they made sure that the earth looked just like it did before they set that fire. As we became industrialized, we lost a lot of that. So we didn't invent ecology. We didn't invent um, conservation. Native Americans for 10,000 years before man came from Europe were using those theories. And I think it's very important if you want to learn things today, go back and look at some of the Native American teachings or indig indigenous people teachings. Um, I often say that knowledge is power, and you heard a little bit earlier from our first speaker about knowledge. Well, you have power once you have that knowledge. And so I want to give you a few conservation tips. I could talk for hours, but we do have other speakers. Um, it is so important to conserve for several reasons. For water, all the water that ever was or ever will be is here right now. Does anybody have an idea when you turn on your tap how old the water is that you're drinking in Albany, Georgia? Somebody give me a number. No. <laughs> well, he blew how important mine sounded by saying that. Um, the water when you turn on your tap is 30 to 40 years old. That means that as it percolate it rains and percolates down from the earth and then comes back up and is pumped into your house or dorm it took 30 to 40 years for that process to take place the water that you're drinking and bathing in is the same water that dinosaurs tromped around in there's no more water we have to conserve it we have to have it 60 percent of your bodies is made up of water 95 percent of a tomato is made up of water it takes 26 gallons of water to make one pound of plastic. Look around and see how much plastic there is in the world. We have to learn to conserve. But water in Albany is pretty cheap. It's $10.31 for the first 3,000 gallons that your house uses. And you probably aren't using 3,000 gallons of water a month. But electricity is expensive. And so I want to give you a couple of tips that you can use to bring your utility bill down. The lower you keep your bills when you get out on your own, the more money there is disposable income in your pockets so that you can use it for other things. Um, the most important thing, again, is to um, be mindful. What we are many times is penny-wise and pound-foolish. Your air conditioning and heating unit, if you have central heat and air, which uses the most power in your home, needs to be serviced twice a year. You service it in the spring before you turn on your air conditioning. You service it in the fall before you turn on your heat. In the winter, does anybody have an idea of what your thermostat should be set on? Yes, sir? 68. 68 in the winter. That Somebody may say, well, that's pretty cool, but every piece of clothing that you put on on top of what you're wearing makes your body feel like you're five degrees warmer. So if you put on a sweater or you sit with an afghan on while you watch TV or have socks on or sleep in a robe, your body thinks it's at 73, and that's Hawaiian weather. We would love it if it was 73 year-round, wouldn't we? So 68 is what the national um, average is. That's what we recommend that you put your thermostat on. It's important to clean your air filters once a month. Albany is the allergy capital of the world. We have lots of allergens in our atmosphere. So once a month, you need to clean those air filters if they're reusable. If they're not, it's one of the cheapest things you can do. Um, they're about a dollar a filter, and it's going to save money on your utility bill. Your water heater uses 18% of your total bill. And a water heater, what it does is it heats up to a certain temperature and then cools down on a 24-hour basis. I'm going to use my household as an example. I take my shower at night. My husband takes his in the morning. I run my dishwasher at night. Out of a 24-hour period, I probably use two and a half, three hours of water a day 
counting the dishwasher. There's no point for me to pay for 24 hours when it's using 18% of my total bill. So there are several things you can do to your water heater to conserve. One is to make sure that you have um, a blanket. They're, they look like tin foil. They have insulation uh, wrapped around your water heater. Whether it's gas or electric, you need to know that because the tops are different. They're about $10. Every water heater should have a blanket on it. If you are using a dishwasher, you have to leave the thermostat set at 140 degrees. That's where water becomes sterilized. If you're not using a dishwasher, you can have it turned down as low as 110 degrees. The next most important thing is usually a water heater is on its own breaker. Once you are finished using your hot water in the morning or at night, flip that switch off, that breaker off. If you don't want to have to go to that trouble every day, there's a very inexpensive timer, like an old kitchen timer, that you can purchase to put on your water heater. You set it to come on 30 minutes before you want to use it and set it to go off when you're finished. 18% of your total bill, doing those few things will make a large difference between good conservation and a good weatherized envelope around your home or apartment, you can save 20 to 50% on your utility bill. And like everything else, they're not going to get cheaper. They're just going to get more expensive. You heard Chuck talk about trees. You want to do deciduous trees. What's a deciduous tree? You want to plant deciduous trees around your house. Who knows what that means? A exactly. Did you hear what she said? Trees where the leaves fall off. In the summer, they make a leafy bower that keeps the sun out of your home. And you want to keep your drapes drawn in the summer because the sun's our largest source of heat. In the winter, when those trees lose their leaves, you want the sun coming into your house and all your drapes and blinds open so you're getting the benefit of that heat, right? Okay. Those are just a few tips. We have lots more. I have booklets here for you. We'll pass out that have got some really good tips on saving energy. It's so incumbent upon you because, again, just like a previous speaker said, you have to teach your children. You're the first generation who learned what ecology, conservation, and recycling are all about. And so it's up to you to help save the earth, and I know that you will do it. And it's been my pleasure to speak to each one of y'all. Thank you, Miss Lori. And <clears throat> we're, all right, hang in there, everybody. We're almost to the end of our program. Um, I'm about to bring up the, la the last three layers of our program, and I will say this much. They have a lot of energy, so if you aren't perked up yet, you're about to be. And to introduce this, to introduce our last tandem of speakers, is one is young young is one young lady I've gotten to know very well over the last two years, and if I ever ask for anything, I promise you, as soon as I say it, she says yes. She she's the first to say yes to anything. There are times I gotta tell her, hold up, girl, don't do it, stop, don't do it because she does so much. But that's the but that's the kind of good energy she produces. She's always reliable. You never she. Yeah, she get. Yeah, she has a little bit of. Yeah, sometimes she might regret something, but she never shows it, and she always has a good spirit about herself. And I hope she brings that to introduce our last pair of speakers. Um, she's my vice president, and by all means, she's an. E she is my. She is my equal, and I'm truly blessed to have her in my life. And I'm sure who everyone else who knows her will say the same. So at this time, I'm going to bring up Vice President of ASU, and that is Miss Montanique Bonner. Hello everyone, my name is Montanique Bonner, like David said, I'm a 21 year old marketing major here at Albany State University and Vice President of the International Organization Enact is formerly known as SIF. I'm here to introduce two wonderful women from the ASU Police Department. Ms. Jackson is 28 and has been in law enforcement for four years. She is a 2009 graduate of the unsinkable Albany State University and has been a part of the police department the ASU Police Department for one year. Sergeant Harris has been in law enforcement for five years and a member of the ASU Police Department for three years. She has been in the United States Army, she was in the United States Army for 10 years and is a veteran of, the, of Operation Enduring Freedom. 
She is a graduate of Calhoun County High School and is currently earning her bachelor's degree from Salem International University. Please help me welcome these two lovely ladies from the ASU Police Department. Today they spoke on good energy. First and foremost, let me say, I am still currently serving in the United States military just on a reserve status. They were supposed to speak on good energy, which is all good and well, but also first and foremost, you should always, always, always be safe. Safety is very important and it comes in many forms. Can anyone tell me what the definition of integrity is? or what you think it might be? Nobody? Being honest? Okay. Anybody else? Do what? What you stand, integrity is what you stand for? Okay. The military defines it as doing what's right legally and morally, even when no one is looking. So what does that mean? Still nothing, I just gave you the definition now. Doing the right thing always. I like you, look at you, yay. <laughs> this is Miss Jackson. This is my security <laughs> officer. And this who I have to watch my back at all times. How y'all doing? It don't work. I talk loud. I don't Good know. afternoon, how you guys doing? Um, I'm going to talk to you about campus safety. Um, as we all know, your building is in Andrews Hall on the lower end of campus. Some things that you can do to be safe while on campus is to stay in a group. If you're going outside of your building, make sure you have somebody with you and always make sure an adult knows where you're going if an adult is not with you. That's one way you can be safe while you're on the campus. Um, <clears throat> Another thing that you can do to be safe is to stay in well-lit areas if it's not sunny outside. Um, always make sure you stay in an authorized area. You never want to go anywhere that you're not supposed to be. You don't want to open up that door to get yourself in trouble, but you always want to be safe. Another thing that um, complies to safety is um, dealing with car safety. Anytime you're on campus, you always want to make sure you're aware of the cars, the vehicles that are around, don't want to walk out in any, any way without looking both ways. Um, everybody who's on campus is not always a student or faculty, so you want to make sure you're aware of all the vehicles that are around you. You don't want to get hit, you don't want anything to happen to you, and we don't want anything to happen to you. So um, that's one way that you can stay safe as far as car safety on campus. With that being said, can y'all hear me in the back? We are each other's keeper. That means if you see a fellow student doing something wrong, you can tell them, no, stop. Don't be afraid to tell them. Don't think they're gonna fight you. Don't be afraid to go tell someone in charge if they're doing something wrong because in the end, you may be saving their lives. If you know a friend is sneaking off to do something they're not supposed to do, go tell someone, find a teacher, find one of us. We'll be happy to go and look into it for you. Y'all understand that? I see you looking at me like, nah, we ain't gonna snitch on nobody in the term, you know, snitching on nobody. Y'all look at the police as snitches, but we're here to protect you. So help us protect you. Come to us. That's what we're here for. That's what we get paid for. We have no problem. You just want to talk offline about something, you're going through problems at home, you're feeling down, we'll talk to you. You see us walking through your buildings at times, you may not see us, but we're always there. 24 seven, we have security on this campus. If we're not in that spot, I guarantee you it's a camera somewhere catching what's going on. So this campus is by far one of the safest I've ever been on. So with that being said, we're done. We're gonna bring Mr. Kwawi back up. If y'all have any questions of us, anything you would like to know, Talk to us. If you want to talk to us in front of everybody, you can see us offline. No problem with it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is everyone okay? All right. Do you feel the good energy? Where do you feel it? 
It's in the air. It's everywhere. All right. <laughs> Dr. Tuck, you want to say a few words? You okay? You up? All right. Well, with that being said, we're going to close it on in. And, um, Good Energy Day was um, a baby of, of Mr. Freeman, and it has progressed over the years since 999, and this year would be the last time that the date, the month, and the year would match. Because like I tell everyone, I won't be able to see 13, 13, 13 in my lifetime. So um, I think that um, with this, this seminar that we had, it was a lot of information that passed around. I think you should take it home and try some of these techniques out with your family, with your brothers, with your sisters, and your friends. You know, and just try to see how they give off the same energy that you gave them. If you give them information, see how they feel about that information. If you smile, if someone smiles back, you know, you just always have something good to say. I know how y'all are. If someone looks bad, you want to tell them they look bad. But what if they look good? Are you real enough to tell somebody that they look good today? Girl, your hair look good. Your, your outfit, it looks good, you know. And just be honest about it, you know, you, you know, because you'll turn around the next day and somebody might tell you the same thing. So you keep that energy with you, you keep that spirit with you, you know, and, and God will bless you because your life is your life. But the way you radiate to others, it'll change theirs. That's the way I was brought up. That's the way I feel. And, and that's what I believe. And thank everyone for coming out to this Good Energy Day event. I appreciate everyone for attending, everyone that helped out. David Lawrence, Seif, um, Mr. Porter, um, Ms. Tucker, President Freeman. Um, everyone that helped contribute, all of our uh, distinguished speakers, everyone, the campus security, everyone, Bro Brother Aaron Muhammad, Mr. Chuck Novell, everyone that came out, I just really appreciated you to had a hand in this, in this good Energy Day event, because like I say, this is our last one. Um, give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah.